So we've seen this picture before. A uh, group of us got together a year ago. Um, uh, getting data together for a paper to designate the barcode for fungi. And a year later, we got the paper finally out. Uh, I've also been informed that one of uh, Benjamin Stilo's uh, images was chosen as a cover image for the hard copy of Proceedings. So we'll have a nice fungal picture on the front page of Proceedings to go along with it. Um, in, a, in a way, this is not really a surprise. People have been using ITS for a long time now. But we've never really had a, a true data set where we compared ITS against other markers across the whole kingdom of fungi. Uh, we know there's limitations to the gene, but taken as a global marker, we could show that it behaves properly as a barcode. Uh, I'd like to also state that we're not saying that it should be used as a phylogenetic marker in all cases. A barcode has a different purpose than a phylogenetic marker. So here's uh, one figure from the paper. You can read the paper for all the remaining data. It just summari excuse me, summarizes the, the lineages that we got data from and that we compared uh, from fungi. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, we also incorporated PCR success. And on the left-hand side, the bars, they represent the number of sequences um, that was in the database that was generated as part of this project. So uh, where does barcode f fit in this brave new world of, of uh, large uh, efforts to generate data? I see barcoding because it's, it's such a simple concept, really. You're just taking a, a short stretch of sequence from a single gene. But the, the real point is to tie names to specimens and also to tie those specimens to sequences, and those sequences should be in an open database so, so that you can qu query it. That's the real important concept here. And we really want to broaden the number of names that's tied to specimens. That's where barcoding has an important role to play. So what next? So the immediate efforts that we will do next is to actually get the barcode tag approved for ITS in GenBank. Uh, as it's done for C01 uh, in, in some of the other organisms. Uh, we still need to have a final discussion on the kind of data standards we as a fungal community want for ITS, what's the minimum standards we want. And then uh, a sub submission will be made to the uh, Consortium for the Barcode of Life um, to declare ITS as an official barcode. This will also involve turning uh, some of the more than 8,000 new accessions that we generated for the paper into barcodes, basically the ITS sequences. So it will involve, for those sequences, where we can actually find sequence traces that those will be submitted to GenBank. So I think we should focus on trying to expand the, the, the barcodes uh, representing fungi in a systematic fashion. Uh, we can start by uh, designating authoritative sequences, sequences that's already in GenBank that might not have trace data associated with it, but it, has, it meets all the other standards for a barcode. So for instance, we could start by selecting a barcode for each class of fungi, each order, and so on. That should be fairly doable. And uh, a, a number of us attended this conference uh, at the end of last year in Adelaide and over a couple of beers in this Argentinian restaurant, uh, this concept came up. Uh, basically, finding a barcode for each uh, type specimen of each genus. Um, and uh, the acronym that we came up with was bag or fungi. So what does bag or fungi mean? We currently have about sequence for about 3,000 genera in GenBank. It's unclear how many of those would be type species, uh, but that could be found out. We want to compare the GenBank and the microbank taxonomies, as Pedro has mentioned, uh, and then we want to highlight types in the GenBank taxonomy um, where possible. 
things which we already have RTA sequence for. And then the, the next, the final step would be to have target lists uh, where we designate uh, species that you want recollected or, or trying to track down the original specimen data. So that's about 16,000 genera in microbank uh, with about 5,000 with uh, metadata. I think this is an ambitious goal, but I think um, uh, it, it's something that we can achieve as in a community if we communicate these lists to uh, specific people who's in the specific locations. So uh, one, we could start with a website. Uh, we could generate these heat lists of genetic types and uh, divide them up by country or region. And which are the people that would be involved? It really should be a broad group of people, not just professional mycologists. We can work with regional mycological societies, uh, people doing practical um, mycology um, that sees a lot of isolates. If they are aware that there is a wanted list of certain species out there, uh, they could maybe assist us. Um, and then we can also work with amateurs. There's already people doing excellent work and I'll say a little bit about that later on, Tom Bruns, who worked with people from Mushroom Observer um, to collect uh, mushroom specimens. So we want to motivate people as well. What can we use as motivation? Could we give amateurs maybe the chance to name a species in, uh, in some cases? Uh, could we have uh, acknowledgements, of course, in publications? We know that that uh, either as authors or, or just an acknowledgement. We know that, that that's a good way to do it. Uh, we sh also should have a way to represent progress, maybe some sort of an interactive tree where we indicate when things have been collected so we can see how far are we from our goal. So here's an example of a regional list of genera that I got from Pedro. Things uh, we will, can contact the mycological community in Taiwan and say, uh, this is a, a list of genera that could be collected. Uh, we already have resources available that we used for the barcode, uh, fungal barcode paper. This is the Connect site that the Consortium for the Barcode of Life set up. We used it uh, quite well to communicate and actually. Uh, we have new people joining all the time, so it's a, it's a good way to communicate. We could have a similar system. We can even use this site for this project. <coughs> Vincent already set up the barcode database for us. Um, we can still decide what will become of that, if it will be expanded into a submission portal or if it will become something else. There's a lot of possibilities there. So here is, uh, we can also interface with other projects. This is um, a project that Tom Bruns and company uh, wants to start, uh, where they work with uh, amateur collectors to recollect the microflora of North America. I kind of like the motto they have there, without a sequence specimen, it's a rumor. Yeah. I think it's very apt. So I'll end with this quote. I think it's, uh, it's a well-known quote by now, but I think it's an honest attempt to try and describe the various kinds of things which we do not know out there. The known knowns, the unknown unknowns, and so forth. So, uh, what do we do next um, uh, as far as the known universe of fungi goes? We, we need to do a better job of organizing the things we already know. We need to look at secondary barcode markers. We know that ITS does not resolve every single fungal species. Maybe if you go down to family or genus level, there could be another marker that could be recommended by a group of experts, and that could be um, communicated uh, um, to the community. Uh, we could uh, actually discuss this tomorrow uh, the barbecue at CBS, if people were interested in this, it would be very good to talk about it. We need to continue to highlight problems with ITS. We know there are groups where the divergence is very high, so 
Uh, we also know that there's uh, all sorts of um, other issues with ITS. We need to document that very well so that we know where the problems are. And then uh, I think the barcoding should, uh, a project should also allow us to interface with the genome sampling that's going on. I, I th think it would be a very good thing if all the genomes that samples, that sampled have representations as ITS sequences in a barcode database. And that the genome samples are also meet the minimum uh, standards for um, sample data so that we know um, where they were sampled. We can also use the barcoding as a framework uh, to inform future sampling for the genomes so that we have the data of which the, who the experts are, where certain species were collected and so forth. So I'll uh, end with this image. Uh, going into the unknown, I think that's really where we want to go. Uh, barcoding will allow us to get a better grip on the stuff we already know. Um, but what we all really want to do is focus more of our efforts into the unknown parts, the unknown fungi. I think um, that will be uh, an important thing to do. Thank you very much. <laughs>